This scene from Halo's 2020 campaign trailer reveal is not in Halo Infinite's campaign. What happened to it? Why did it get cut? And what it could mean moving forward for Halo Infinite's story. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here once again. Today we're doing a commentary, a little bit of theory crafting when it comes to this one scene in particular from the 2020 campaign trailer that isn't in the campaign at all. Now before we go any deeper into this video, I want to say there will be spoilers in this. So if you have not completed the campaign, I highly suggest you do that first because it's a fantastic campaign. Then come back to this video later on because guys, there's a lot of things to break down right here. So if you guys like these discussion theory crafting kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know if you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo and Halo Infinite, guys, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So having a moment within Halo's campaign shown within a trailer not being in the final game, it's nothing new. We saw this throughout Halo 2, throughout Halo 3 as well. Even Combat Evolve's initial reveal at the Mac world was completely not in the game whatsoever. And of course, we all know what happened with Halo 5's marketing and how a lot of stuff got cut for that game or just straight up just didn't happen. But the important thing what I want to point out from this scene, it's super quick. It's just a quick glance over, but you see three orange dots on Master Chief's visor reflecting onto him. I also hoping that 343 was gonna be digging into some deep lore because Zeta Halo is the oldest Halo. It's actually from the original array of Halo rings. It has a rich history involving some deep lore as well as the flood. These three reddish orange looking dots on his visor are very reminiscent of mendicant bias. Obviously the orientation is a little different. It could be changed because there are many extension stations for mendicant bias to exist. He has his main primary extension is kept on installation 07. But this kind of ties into what we saw for the legendary ending dialogue that we had for Halo Infinite guys. Even though the dialogue is about containing the endless within Zeta Halo, it, I think it kind of ties back into Mendicant Bias and the Flood. So let's get into this theory crafting right here. So at the beginning of this cutscene, you see it's on Zeta Halo, which takes place for Halo Infinite, but this takes place almost 100,000 years earlier at 97,365 BCE. This takes place only just a few years before the Great Purification, which was the initial launch of the Halo rings to stop the Forerunner Flood War. But the thing about the Endless is that they are unaffected by the firing of the rings. And the Forerunners, forever wanting to be the holders of the mantle of responsibility, try to imprison the Endless in the Silex, which we see Atriox walk in, place a key of some sort to unlock the Silexes, ultimately releasing the Harbinger into the game, and that's where we came across her. But at the very end of the dialogue of the legendary ending, Grand Edict reassures the Spawned Empire that offensive bias will be helping them out when it comes to engaging the Endless. So how does this tie in with Mendicant Bias and the Flood? Well, the interesting thing about the Flood is that they need a nervous system to, in a way, feed on the unfortunate victim. And the Halo Rings destroy nervous systems, effectively killing a living being. So could it be that the Harbinger was trying to bring back the Endless and so they have enough of a force to put up a fight against the UNSC and then potentially releasing the Flood? I mean, that certainly would be one way for the Endless to easily take power within the galaxy by just unleashing Unleashing the Flood, and if the Flood aren't hungry for you, well, it makes it pretty easy to just be the kings of the galaxy. And who could potentially hold the keys to unlocking the Flood? Well, potentially Mendicant Bias, since he was basically became like the AI leader in the way of the Flood back during the Flood Forerunner War, which would cause one epic story, especially since the Flood are not in the vanilla story for Halo Infinite. I do expect them to return in some capacity, maybe in some kind of large event, maybe next year's DLC for like a campaign expansion or something like that. I was very surprised to not see the Flood in Halo Infinite's campaign, and I do fully expect them to make a return in some capacity. And with like the awakening of offensive bias, I think you can't have offensive bias without mendicant bias because offensive bias was literally created to fight against mendicant bias. So a reason why I think this cutscene was taken away from the main game was one, I think obviously had, had to been like cut content or something like that. Maybe they reworked the story a bit. It seemed like aspects of Halo Infinite's story was changed within that one year time span because I specifically remember 343 saying that that Discover Hope trailer where you see the pilot was the very beginning of the game. Well, it like wasn't because we had an entire cutscene that took place with Aatrox on 
the UNSC Infinity. So to possibly trim the fat and get the game in a working state that has a coherent story, they might have had to cut that scene for time, which is certainly not unheard of in any game development ever. Which if you're gonna be diving into like offensive bias, mendicant bias, the flood, the endless and things like that, I feel like that's an entire campaign story by itself. So it might have actually been a good thing to have it be cut out of the vanilla story, which could play into the trademark that was recently filed by 343 for Halo, the Endless title. Also a very interesting thing about the Endless, the name itself, I believe it has ties into their functionality as a species as a whole. As we know that the Endless were a species that were alive and very much a threat to the Forerunners back before the original Ray was fired. And we had this scene, which seemed very interesting about the Endless. Tell them, I am sorry it took so long. Who is she talking to? Unknown. The signal's old? Like, really old. My time is ended. Yours, too. They will make sure. The Endless will return. <laughs> So seeing that the signal that was sent from the Harbinger being really old seems like they're kind of reaching back to maybe where they were first referencing in the legendary ending about like 97,000 something BCE. And the Endless, I feel like kind of plays into the concept of time as well, which was also discussed within the legendary ending, saying that time was in a construct that the Forerunners could control, but saying that's why we can't let the Endless have control of it as well. Time will forget they ever existed. Time is not a construct we can control. And we cannot allow it to be theirs. Especially with the character's name being the Harbinger, that means a lot. Because the word Harbinger is a foreshadowing of something to come. So for example, say you see flowers blooming in spring, that is the Harbinger of summer. So with their species being named the Endless, I think something about time is gonna be added into this kind of aspect of Halo, as well as her name being the Harbinger, meaning that we are going to see more of the Endless come into the game. So there could be like a species that can transcend time. Maybe time travel might be start becoming a thing within Halo Infinite's storytelling. It certainly happened within the campaign with this scene where we actually find out when we go through the teleporter, it's three days later, even though it felt instantaneous for the player. Where are we? Chief, I think the better question is when are we? I don't know how, but we've been gone for days. Three days, to be precise. And so after time traveling, figuring out we've been time traveling for three days, even though it seemed instantaneous, this next line really foreshadows what's gonna be coming in the future for Halo Infinite. The Banished and the Harbinger were looking for something that was never found. Why would the Forerunners hide something and throw away the key? So what could be so dangerous that the Forerunners wanted to lock them in and throw away the key? One, it could be the Endless, it's kind of what we saw, though, it wasn't completed, so I don't think the Endless are like gonna come back in full form in some capacity. Obviously some space magic could happen and make that work. Another person would be Mendicant Bias, that AI that we talked about earlier. And I think that's the main reason why this cutscene was not part of Halo Infinite's vanilla campaign, because I think it got cut for content and saved for something much larger. And I think if you're gonna have Mendicant Bias, most likely you're going to have the Flood as well. It's only a matter of time for the Flood to return to Halo, guys. And I think the reason why the Flood is not in the original campaign story is because I would think they need it needs like an entire campaign itself focused on the flood. Which I'm saying could be a reason why there's no infection for multiplayer, because they're waiting for that event to come around. But what are your guys' thoughts on the campaign and on this video as well? Do you think that the three main villains we're talking about, the Endless, Mendicant Bias, and the Flood, all are gonna be playing a part within the next campaign story for Halo Infinite? Let me know in the comment section down below if I'm just crazy. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.